have you here today. We are. And I'm so excited to have the professor back. I am too. And we have the professor's wife yes. with us on the show today. Yeah. We have Robin and Dr. William Fortune with us today on our broadcast. And we love you guys. Can we I do. Welcome, we love you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's such we, an honor. You have become one of my best friends and it's confidants true. that I can talk to. That's and, right. uh, you know, we hope to visit your home. You've invited us to your home. Please. And our goal would be to do that and to build it. Maybe we could see Billy. He's your neighbor. Kind right, of almost right next door, hall. right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's talking about the Reverend Billy Graham when he says it's he's his neighbor. Yes. Yeah. yes. Which we just got to. Uh, well, we got a Christmas card this year. Yes. Uh, I guess it's after Christmas. Right. When this show plays, probably. Yes, yes. But uh, Dr. Fortune is from Montreat uh, Christian College. Yes. Down up in Montreat. Yes. Up there in up the mountains. The beautiful North Carolina. And that's where Ruth and Billy have lived their whole life. They were married up there. Did yes. you know that? They were married on your in college. In Chapel, on the campus. On the campus. Yes where this, the church that uh, they attend is there. and In fact, we rededicated the chapel this year as the Reverend William and uh, Ruth Graham Chapel. Really? Was, we had a special rededication ceremony. Wow. You know, that was my first outside. I'm going to cry through this whole show today. <laughs> That's okay. But my first step outside the prison Right. Ruth invited me to church at that church on your campus. Yes. That's her church, too. Yes. She goes to them. And, yep. uh, and then had me for dinner, and, and, and uh, the whole family, the whole Graham bunch were there. There was mm -hmm. all the way across the chapel, two whole rows were there. And so uh, we have some things that are really kind of brings us together, you know. Yes. And uh, I just noticed in the news today, uh, Donald Trump is is thanking Billy Graham. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's in the news today. Yeah, yeah. I, I have the article. It says, uh, thanking it says, Franklin Graham, and this is from Donald Trump. So instrumental in my victory. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe you received that. a thank thank you call. Did you not? As well? I did. What do you? Th what historically is? You're the historian today because mm -hmm. you are. A, a, you teach history mm -hmm. at Montreat College, and historically to have the president-elect call you back in the old days before they had phones. They maybe mm -hmm. sent a telegram, and then before that, they sent it by horse and buggy, I guess. <laughs> what a unique experience we've seen in these last five or six weeks now of a president-elect, president I would have to say humbly, going back to the people and saying thank you. It's not Brilliant. two years before the election, oh, we're friends with Iowa. Right. And I can think of one candidate that would have totally ignored Iowa the day after the election, yeah. but not this one. Mm -hmm. He's going around the country. He's thanking people. He called you up personally to thank you. I, I really want to, we've got an amazing show today. And, and today, for the first time in 37 years, I'm going to be showing a show tapes, piece of tape that has never been seen before of right. Ronald Reagan and I meeting together. It was my first time to really meet with him, even though I had been in rooms with, in the room with him. But this was my first conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And it was 1979. 1979. Never been seen never anywhere been seen. before. It's a two-camera uh, video. Mm -hmm. The only problem is the one that was shooting me, the camera, <laughs> that reel's missing. And so today we're going to yeah. be showing you when Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. was a prophet. Yes. Yes. Did you know he prophesied? <laughs> yes. Ronald Reagan prophesied. It's exciting. And Don't want to miss it. Don't and miss it. Dr. Portion is going to comment on it. So you've already kind of gotten a little peek at it. But uh, this is the first time publicly, and, and I, I really would like you as a historian to comment on what he's saying. The several hours before we started doing this program, your staff took Robin and I into a uh, broadcast room. I think they got a video of yeah, it up. Yeah, they do, yeah. It was ice water down my back. Mm. And Robin and I were both in tears. Oh, 
Yeah. I'm choking up on it too. You are. I, we were both. It, it, right. it, it was. It was like a prophet yeah. coming back to us, and when it was done viewing, uh, I actually said the whole room was silent with your staff, and I actually said, "This is like God has sent." Ronald Reagan back to us to tell us what it is today that exactly. we have to be concerned about. That is so true. This is going to be a very exciting tape. Yeah, I mean, it's whenever you watch videos today, you're going to be sitting there thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, is history repeating itself or history just repeated itself? The same issues, which I wasn't alive and I didn't know the issues that were taking place. And as I walked, watched this interview, I was like, oh my goodness, it's the exact same issues. And what's so crazy is that it's almost like history is repeating itself with you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were a pivotal person in helping Ronald Reagan get elected. There's actually a video of you in Washington at a prayer meeting saying, listen, America, you only have one choice left. And that's where we were. What this is? That's exactly what we were seeing in this 2016 election. We've we've simply went from the Ronald to the Donald. I mean, it's the it is it's a parallel. It's good incredible. Line. Yeah. Good line. Yeah. Uh, this is a little. It was this is a piece of a a spot that they made, and I was preaching. And we don't have the tape yet. We haven't found the whole tape. It's there somewhere mm -hmm. in the thousands of tapes yeah. of me speaking at Washington for Jesus. Right. John and Ann Jimenez, yes. my dear friends, had put it together. Yeah. They sponsored it. They made it. And so they asked me to be the, one of the speakers right. there. Right. That was back in 1980. Mm -hmm. That's when it was. was. It? The first Washington for Jesus. Does, do any of you remember that? I mean, April? I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember watching and, it. And it was yeah, literally we there. the reason, yes. the reason uh, it was put together was to call America back to God. That's yes. right. It was wow. like time was running out, and they felt if we get the wrong president, mm -hmm. it would be the last election that we would be honoring God in this country. And this is just a little piece of my sermon. And I was a bit younger and a little louder, probably. <laughs> so let's just take a peek at this. Yeah. If God be with us, we will win. But if we turn our backs on God, we will lose. Many feel that America has one last chance. I believe that it's not one last chance. I believe America has one last choice. I believe it's time we choose to honor the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and put him back the head of the United States of America. That's one little piece out of that oh, yeah. sermon, so that's all there is. But you, you know where I stand after you heard that, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we need those voices today. Yes. yes. We absolutely need those voices yes. because too many people are thinking the previous election ends and then the Electoral College has thankfully made its choice. Praise now God. we can all sit back? No. No. It has just started. Right. This struggle has just started. That's right. I have never seen America so divided. And America's been divided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen it so evilly. Can I say that? That's not a word, probably. Divided. So mean, so evil. Uh, uh, thousands calling for the assassination of yeah. our president-to-be. Can you ever look back and see a greater wounding on the left than there's been in the last few months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, the, know, you, you spoke, that I, I happened to be sitting in the audience right there. It, that was back in 2007 that you spoke that. And I think we have a B-roll and we could show it. Mm -hmm. Do we have that ready, Mondo? The Lord gave me a prophetic word and I'm going to throw it in and let the prophets try it. But the Lord showed me there was going to be on the left a great wounding and as I'm sitting here, I'm afraid there's going to be a death. 
I really am. I'm, Among, I'm very shaken. You're seen on the left like liberal pro The politics. liberal, in the liberal world, whether it be Democratic, I don't know, the Lord didn't say Democrat, he just said on the left. Mm. There will be a great wounding. And I don't know for sure what it means, but as I'm sitting here and you're talking, that, that word came back to me again with weeping inside of me, a great right. anger, an, anxiety and pain. Wow. The thing, and, there, and you know what they're saying? That this wounding of the Democratic Party, they are saying that unless it can regroup, it could be a destructive force to the Democratic Party because it, they're so scattered and I've never seen such mean spiritedness. Yeah, it's true. They won't accept that the fact is that America elected a president. Right. Well, they have to accept it now. But but I agree but with what. But they're not going to. I agree with what you, what you said. Um, Why uh, is this, Professor? Pastor, you received a call from Donald Trump thanking you for your efforts. And we all know here, you were not enlisted in his side. He wasn't calling you and advising you. I set in on programs with you. You think about your impact. The Electoral College and its brilliance put things back to the states, and in several states it was 10,000 votes or less. Mm -hmm. One state, a key one, about 100,000. Mm -hmm. We as Christians are told we do not hate the sinner, we hate the sin. Yes. We will still embrace a sinner, mm -hmm. but we will not like what they do. But when you have a presidential candidate calling you deplorable. Oh, yes. Oh, that And vitriolic it. hatred coming out. Mm. And then we're getting a message that we as Christians have to stand up. Well, I'm reminded of a, of, of a wonderful story. When communism collapsed in Poland, the Pope flew to Warsaw. And when he got off the plane, he kissed the pavement and he smiled and said, now they see how many divisions the Lord has. We have seen what Christians can do when they stand up. Yes, that's right. We do not hate the sin. We do not hate the sinner. We hate the sin. That's right. On the other side, I feel like at times they hate us. Yes. And we have to realize that. And so we have to stand firm. We cannot go home and just say, okay, it's over, election's over, I'm going to go back to watching reality TV. Yeah. We're in the middle of a very bad reality television show, and it's going to keep on playing for a while. you got to stand up. Right, that's right on. We will be right back after this special message.